Howdy y'all. Today we're going to be taking another look at my Open Auto Pro setup, this time in person. We're going to be going over some of the hardware updates that I've done recently. The main thing that I wanted to fix was the power. I've always had issues with the power on the 3B Plus. No matter what I do, it seems to always give me the undervoltage message. I've tried multiple different buck converters, different order of operations in terms of getting this power from that converter, and I always struggle. But finally, I found something that has been working, and honestly, is a lot more simple than that. So we're gonna be taking a look at that here in a bit. And the other hardware, I guess, related to the upgrade would be the Raspberry Pi 4, which is something that I've been wanting to get for quite a while, but I wanted to figure out the power for that. So I went ahead and picked up some heat sinks to go with that and some jumper cables to power everything the proper way because in the last hardware update that I did, I was powering the touchscreen and off of the touchscreen board, I was powering the Raspberry Pi, which is basically the opposite of what you would normally do. But anyway, we're fixing all that and it's been interesting to see how this affects daily use. Anyway, enough talking. Let's get to it. Okay, and here we are. Now I'm just gonna pop this out and show you what's been helping me power this. Now this provides, and I'll leave this link below, this provides two quick charge 3.0 capable USB ports. Not that that standard really matters for the Raspberry Pi, it just matters that it's providing the correct voltages and what this allows me to do instead of with my previous sort of types of buck converters, I would have to wire it into here and wire the output here. So what I would do is get into a USB cable and just kind of strip that out and connect it here. So this is just a lot cleaner, a lot less work, and it provides everything properly. I do not get the under voltage message unless I have the Pi powered on without fully turning on the car, but that's pretty normal. So once I have it powered on, it powers on just fine. So that has been a complete savior because these, even though these supposedly have the correct sort of outputs, it I always had issues with these things. So I'm gonna put that back here, pop this in, and take a closer look at the wiring. I had already kind of loosened this up earlier. Let's see if this lets me get in here. But here we are. This is the Raspberry Pi 4 with the Hi-Fi back, uh, Hi-Fi tech, sorry, that we talked about in the previous video. So that is fully configured just fine. All I did was take the SD card out of the previous Raspberry Pi 3B Plus and throw it in here and everything worked just right. So as you can see here, I have the power coming out of the Hi-Fi Berry deck and with two jumper cables going into the board of the touchscreen. So that's the proper way to power that board and that's been running just fine. And as you can see over here, I have a USB cable over here coming into a 90 degree adapter just to make it a lot easier, a lot cleaner, uh, a lot less space taken up in this sort of little uh, pocket that I have here. And that's been working totally fine. I just connected everything that I had back here, a couple USB ports, one of them going to my a USB audio device and the other one going to the factory USB port in my car, which is really nice just in case I, for whatever reason, don't have the wireless Android Auto set up on my phone or more realistically, if I'm going to let somebody connect their stuff into my car without having to set up and connect them to the Wi-Fi hotspot. It's just a lot simpler to plug in a cable into here and do everything you gotta do. And it also comes in handy when I need to plug in something like this keyboard that I use all the time. Uh, so I can just plug in the receiver there without having to necessarily leave one in the Raspberry Pi, which I usually try to do, but for some reason I always end up taking it out. So that's super clutch. And now, right now I have it set to turn on with ignition so we'll go ahead and try that which again this is going to probably give us the message of under voltage because i am not fully turn turning on the car but that's pretty standard for this type of setup so here we're going to give it a second the only thing that i have yet to do on this just because i was messing around with everything is put my custom uh boot animation back on here so it's going to have the basic open auto pro one which hopefully you can see right there 
so I just gotta make sure I add that. And one of the other things that I didn't really talk about with Open Auto Pro 12 is that they added some pretty neat customization. So here it booted up into OAP and immediately it's going to go into, oh, let me pause that before I get into trouble. It's gonna immediately boot into Android Auto just like I have it set to. So the other thing that I talked about or kind of mentioned is that this feels a lot different than it did on my Raspberry Pi 3B Plus, only in a good way. Everything feels a lot more responsive, even stuff like going out and using the, the keyboard. So let me open that up. So even simple things like using onboard feels so much more responsive on here than it ever did on the 3B Plus, just manipulating everything. Uh, I, I knew that it was going to be an upgrade. I just didn't really know how big of an upgrade this was going to be, but everything feels a lot more responsive. Even Android Auto itself, everything feels super snappy. Uh, the touch responsiveness is really surprising, and I haven't been having any weird issues like I had before where I would occasionally just have uh, stuttering with my audio, or it seemed like this would kind of like lag. The, the entire UI would lag for a bit, and take a second to come back up. I've been using this straight for a week and have not had that issue. So that's been super duper nice. But anyway, that's gonna cover the entire sort of setup here. If you have any questions about any one particular thing, definitely let me know. Uh, but yep, yeah, this is it. And I've been super happy with it. The only other thing that I have been trying to get working that I'm still struggling with is OBD. And I'm gonna try something else because this is not doing it uh, for some reason. It doesn't seem to be uh, detecting or the Raspberry Pi detects it as a device, but it's not pulling any information from the car. So I don't know if it's something with this or my configuration. I'm gonna get a different one and see if that goes any better. So stay tuned for that. Anyway, if any of this stuff was remotely interesting or helpful, leave a like down below, subscribe to the channel because I'm definitely going to keep on working on this until I get it just right for me.